Hi everyone, this is Rachel. Welcome to either the Healthy Room Facebook page or group or possibly RoomTube depending on where you're watching this video. It's going to appear both on my page, the, the Healthy Room, the Facebook group Healthy Room and later on on RoomTube which is the Healthy Room YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about why you may, might not want to chart your cycle. So that's a bit of a different message to my usual one. Anyone who has met me or has spent five minutes with me maybe <laughs> will know that I think charting your cycles is one of the most empowering, um, insightful practices that you can do. And I absolutely stand by that. It completely changed my life, how I organize my life, how I do so many different things. And I couldn't imagine not charting my cycle and not being aware of what's going on in my body. I love teaching uh, natural family planning and fertility awareness. I would not ever go back to a stage where I didn't have those in my life. However, there are times when charting your cycle can cause you stress or distress. And when that happens, that's when I think people should perhaps lay off the menstrual cycle charting. Now it could be that you are literally just charting when you're having your bleed and when you're not. It could be that you are doing a single index measure, say you're, you're charting as well as having your bleed, you're charting whether you've got cervical fluid or whether you have um, a temperature rise around ovulation. So you could be doing any of those as a single index. You could be doing the double check symptothermal method, which is where you do both the cervical fluid and the temperature. And finally, you could also be doing um, the triple check, which is the cervix position, uh, feel, movement, etc. whether it's open, whether it's closed. Um, that's not so reliable on its own, but it can be a great sort of window into what's going on when you are charting the other signs as well. So all those are great, um, wonderful, lovely. But there are times when I say to people, you might want to stop actually charting. And some people will even stop charting things such as how they feel on different days and just put the pen and paper away. Now, obviously, if you're aware of your cervical fluid and your moods, how they change throughout the month, that's not going to disappear. But how you put pen to paper and how you um, action what's going on in your chart might change so number one and these are if you need trigger warnings um this is going to come up now um number one is sometimes charting your cycle might be too painful for you in some way Sometimes um, this happens because you're going through a period where you're trying to conceive and you're not being successful. Um, sometimes it might be because you've had a miscarriage or um, some other reason related to that area of your health. And for that reason, you might not want to pick up the pen, paper, temperature probe, um, thermometer, that's the word for temperature probe. If that's the case, please do feel free to refrain and take some time away because piling on extra emotional energy and stress is not going to feel great. It's not going to feel fulfilling. Another time when you may want to put it down is if you are actively trying to conceive, you know your cycle is in good working shape. You may or may not know whether uh, your partner's sperm is effective or not, and you may or may not know whether um, the two of you have any problems together as a couple, because infertility is a third and a third and a third roughly, so a third female problems, a third male problems, and a third combined issues. Um, but some women find that once they keep the temperature charting, you know, they're desperate to keep doing pregnancy tests right up to the point of their period and it becomes obsessive. And when this happens, it's not great either. So if you fit into that category, I do recommend that you put down the temperature. Um, I don't know why I keep saying temperature probe, thermometer. Um, and just, you know, go with the rhythms of your body. If you've got cervical fluid, then go for it. So that's the second time I recommend people put it down. 
The final one is more sort of along the psycho, spiritual, energetic, emotional side. And this is when you are feeling more of a call to be aligned with the moon over your own body. That is totally fine. And I'm going to explain this uh, a bit more. So our menstrual cycle, we have several key points. We have our bleed and we have ovulation. And it's a cycle process. Some people see ovulation as being a peak and menstruation as being sort of the down because our energy levels are higher ovulation and low on menstruation. Now, combining that with the moon cycles, some people place a big importance on whether they are bleeding with the full moon or with the dark moon, and then the equivalent, are you ovulating on the full moon or on the dark moon? And some people call them red moon cycles and white moon cycles, depending which way around it is, and attach a lot of significance to this. Now, unless your period <laughs> um, happens every 29.5 days, like the moon, it's not going to always be in sync with the moon phase. It's eventually going to move in and out of sync with each phase of the moon. And there is a lot of sort of body wisdom that can be gleaned through that. And if you truly feel that the moon affects how you feel throughout your period, it's going to um, affect how you feel throughout your menstrual cycle. And there is a lot that you can learn from what is going on internally by journaling, by cycling, and being completely open to that process. However, I see in a number of social media groups and posts, women getting stressed, and in fact, not just women, anyone who bleeds, getting stressed because they're not in sync with the moon and they think it makes them you know, less of a person, less female. Um, it can really upset their identity or maybe less spiritual because they're not bleeding on the full moon or they're not bleeding on the dark moon and someone has told them that they should be and that is problematic, but they're not. It's not problematic. And if you really do feel more attuned to the moon cycle and you feel that you know, the similar things that happen in the menstrual cycle, for example, feeling more energy in the lead up to ovulation and feeling calmer on the, the lead up to your period or even more angry um, if you get PMS on the lead up to your period. If you're feeling that fits what's going on with the moon cycle better and that is how you want to organise your life, that is totally fine. And if it's stressing you out to try and chart and match your chart to the moon cycle, then don't worry about charting your menstrual cycle. Yes, it's wonderful. Yes, it gives you so many clues to your health. But it really, if it's distressing you and you really want to be like aligned to the moon, or it doesn't even have to be that, it can be aligned to anything else. If you feel that that works better for you than um, charting your menstrual cycle, go with what works for you. <laughs> That's the most important thing I really want you um, to take from this video. It doesn't matter what I think, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, it's what works best for you. So those are the three big times I say it's probably worth forgetting charting um, or maybe just reconfiguring it in a way that works for you. Um, so you might want to still track your moods but in time with the moon or even in time time with the day and the sun cycles if that works better for you um, if you have some other cycle that works better for you so maybe you you don't have um, periods at all maybe just actually going with the calendar month works for you that's totally fine whatever works for you works for you <laughs> and it's not going to be the same answer for everyone else so please don't feel that you should be matching other people's expectations so that's my video on when you might want to not consider charting your cycle. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to add comments, like, share. If you want to comment in a non-public way, then do make sure you comment within the Healthy Womb Facebook group, um, and then it will only be seen there. And if it was helpful, please do like the page, um, the Instagram page, and the Womb YouTube channel. I can never say that right. And if you want more information in general about your menstrual cycle or the free menstrual cycle tracking toolkit, go to thehealthyroom.com and it's there and it's free. You just drop in your email address. 
and you'll get all the goodness sent to your inbox. Have a great day. Bye.